Hi everyone, I'm Mike Gorin, and welcome to another perfect playthrough, where for our 11th game of Christmas, we are playing Mortal Kombat for the Sega Genesis. Sorry this took so long, but I had to wait for the game to come in. The word code has many different definitions. The Shaolin Martial Arts Tournament is governed by a system of rules of conduct, an ethical code. The combatants respect each other as warriors, no matter what degree of hatred they have for one another. A code of honor. Another type of code could be defined as an arbitrary system of symbols or letters for transmitting messages. A secret code. World combat adheres to many codes, but does it contain one? Actually, it contains two, and I will put those codes up here on the screen. And, that, and here's code 2 right here. Cheats enabled. Now, the only cheats I really care about is flag 0, flags 2 and 3, and uh, flag 5. Flag 0 allows me to one-shot most of my opponents in this game. And first opponent is Johnny Cage. Uh, flags, f flag 5 allows me to uh grants me unlimited continues though we will not be making use of any of them and flags two or three will make a certain encounter a little easier pull off so right now i'm just demonstrating all the moves that each character is capable of using and that was john most characters have the same four or five moves I would say about the same 7 to 8 moves if you count single button presses. Alright, we need to find a way to face this guy. So, I'm basically just showing off all of Johnny Cage's moves here. And because that guy popped up, I was forced to fight this guy for real. Now, you might think fighting these characters on allowing yourself to one-shot all the characters in this game makes this insanely easy. At the same time, it does have a drawback. And we'll get to that in a bit. So right now I'm just one shot everyone using all the moves at Johnny Cage's arsenal. Most characters have the same group of moves, but only about two or three moves unique to them. Plus the a fatality. Now here's the stage coming up. Oh, right after the bonus rounds. And what I need to do is, in this stage, I need to perform a double flawless. That means clearing round one and round two without getting hit, and I need a shadow to appear in the moonlit sky. That shadow, thanks to uh, flags two and three, will manifest itself in either an initials or a person's face. Then I have to perform a fin uh, fatality here. The stage has a stage-specific fatality, but I just wanted a chance to fight this guy so I could claim perfect playthrough conditions. Fight. And this is a fight against Reptile in the pit area. Now, it's titled Scorpion, but it's Reptile. And what Reptile is, is he's basically a hodgepodge of... Uh, Sub-Zero and Scorpion's movesets has access to all of them. And for defeating Reptile, you get a massive point bonus. Now we go move on to the next stage. Point. Now I'm only going to fight Reptile once, because it's basically just the same thing over and over and over again. And I don't feel the need to show him off. 
So, perfect playthrough conditions is, aside from at least one encounter with Reptile, I need to beat the game with every single character. As I has accomplished everything the game has to offer, and each character has a couple unique moves. Uh, their unique moves are primarily just, uh, a character's unique moves in, in Mortal Kombat basically boils down to a projectile, uh, a homing attack, sometimes a teleport, a teleportation move, and a fatality. That's it. Now the mirror match. Mirror match is always the seventh match. Now I'm not gonna show you all the moves and bone combinations that I perform here. I'm basically just taking it slow for now. If you wanna see a full list of Avery character's possible moves set in this game, go ahead and look it up try looking it up on uh, places like GameFAQs or a Mortal Kombat wiki. Heck, if you have Mortal Kombat on the Genesis like I do, you can even look up the instruction manual. So, the downside to this is Whenever a second fighter appears on stage, you the uh, one hit the one hit code completely goes away, and now you actually have to fight the fighter on a much higher difficulty setting. And by higher, I mean even beyond the hardest difficulty setting. Anyways, here's the stage specific punish uh, fatality: perform an uppercut to send them plummeting into these spike pits. Right. By the way, you still take damage even when you block, even after blocking attacks, so... And by the way, Johnny Cage is the only character that loses a shared attack in favor of a unique one. Right. And what you just saw perform me perform right here. So, Dry Cage is a bit unique in this regard. Having said all that, he's probably he's probably middle of somewhere in the middle of the pack in terms of effectiveness. I think the best character in the game is Sub Zero, followed by Scorpion and R Raiden. The well, Luke King's also really good. I would probably put Luke King just slightly ahead of Johnny Cage. So Johnny Cage is the fifth best fighter in the game in my book. Really, I'm just performing the same moves over and over again because Sonya is just doing the same thing over and over again. So, I'm definitely a little rough around the edges, but the reason why I rate Son- I will get to uh, why I think other characters are better than Johnny Cage, but basically it has to do with his projectile and his- Oh, the music hasn't changed yet. Oh, find you already. I should have done the uppercut, but hindsight's 2020. You basically get free uppercut against the sky to start, but better late than never. And now we go straight to round two against Goro. We can beat him on one hit.
The final boss, Shang Tsung, in the main villain. One more battle! And... Here, and I gotta be honest, the... I will explain my reasonings a bit... Shortly. Our Supreme Mortal Kombat Warrior. Through the battle and life or death situations faced during the tournament, Johnny Cage learns the true importance of his fine skills. He also realizes the full potential of the tournament. He returns to Hollywood after defending his new title as Grand Champion. Cage later goes on to film Mortal Kombat the movie and its many successful sequels. Unfortunately, Mortal Kombat only had one sequel and it was one of the worst movies ever made. But at least both movies were kind of fun. Didn't know John Ca Johnny Cage made it. I thought it was made by Paul W.S. Anderson. Oh well. Oh, and I just checked. And it looks like the cheats are still on. Blood code's still on. Cheat code's cheat mode's still on. The flags are still on. Alright, and I'm gonna ch go on to this guy. And I'm just checking to see if the fights are largely the same. Yes, it kinda is. Main difference is Johnny Cage and this guy, Kano, has swapped places. And I would put Kano as 6. He's not terrible, but he takes a bit of a while to get used to, I guess. So, the reason why Mortal Kombat for the Sega Genesis took as long as it did for it to come out, it wasn't just because I was waiting for it to appear on shelves uh, to appear out at my house. I was actually originally planning to do Mortal Kombat and split that up, it up into a seven part series. But I ultimately decided you know what, after the Johnny, considering how quickly I finished Johnny Cage's storyline, I decided to just keep this all in one episode. And I actually worked on this, on this video while there were some problems arising with my Final Fantasy VII perfect playthrough. And the problem, the problem has already sorted itself out, so it's going to... So if it hasn't come soon enough, don't worry, it will come in. I, I'm currently recording the audio here on January 9th. So part 60 of my perfect playthrough of Final Fantasy VII will be uploaded on January 11th. That's a promise. And here's the face on the moon. Which means if I wanted to, I could... Uh, challenge another reptile to yet another fight, but... I'm not gonna do it. So I'm gonna just send him straight to the pits. And if you do that, right, a uh, reptile will not appear. Fight. So I get to speed through this whole set of encounters. Fight. I do think Reptile's arrival when he does show up to give us clues as to how to unlock him, it's pretty obnoxious. But so far, so good. Be and it's obnoxious because it forces you to fight the opponent for real, at least in round one. Ripping the heart out of my opponents with Kano. Uh, Kano is definitely the bad guy out of the seven. I would say the hero, the more heroic characters are probably, uh, right here's Reptile. No, I don't want to fight you again, Reptile. 
So I'm trying to be force Kano to approach. And something you will notice is that... Like so many fighting games out there, on the highest difficulty levels, the AI will actively re-read your uh, inputs. So they know exactly what you're going to do and how to respond to that. Oftentimes, though, they will just try to... Block... They'll just try and block you. Block an attack. But they- but because they are getting one shot, they die instantly. Now, this goes into, obviously, the endurance rounds in the transition to Goro. As well. Not just with the reptile thing. Or you have to fight the second fire that appears on screen for real. Even if you never fought the first guy. You know, the one-shots only applies to the first opponent. Right. I think the only reason why I would rate Johnny Cage ahead of Kano is because I prefer Johnny Cage's uh, approach option to Kano's. Kano's kind of has a delay because he just remains hovering into the air until you let go. But honestly, if I were to replay the game, I would definitely refocus my strategies for these layer fights towards the uppercuts. Towards setting up uppercuts. Oh well, at this point, I'm basically just improving on my skills. I normally don't play fighting games. And I wasn't going to play this on console because, well, I suck at it, that's why. And now for the third endurance round. Took a lot longer being Luke Kane than I'd like. Yeah, I just might as well just spam until her health, until the opponent's health depletes, or until they make themselves wide open. And I basically learned the value of an uppercut with my next character that I'm gonna be playing as. And I perform a throw that every character has access to. Being the heart out of a hot chick. Now, oh, here's Goro. Trying to play this guy overly cautious. But luckily, he's a big giant lug, so just so long as I can respond to his boost before he does. By blocking that, he goes down one hit anyways. But yeah, Kano does not have very good approach options and he can't teleport. I also am not the biggest fan of this projectile as it comes out a little slow and is a little high. Outstanding. Yeah, we already saw that text. But the defeat of Goro and Shang Tsung kind of will bring his own brand of treachery to the tournament. His Black Dragon organization forms a monopoly over the contest. 
I bring shame and torment to all those involved. The rain will end in anarchy and death. It will result in the final dismantling of the tournament in the Battle of the Lawless. So yeah, Kano is definitely a bad guy in this game. Side note, I'm skipping the end credits all the way up until the end because they go on for so long. And besides, all I really have to do is reset the console. Next opponent is Sub-Zero, aka my first taste in learning the true value of an uppercut. The downside is that Sub-Zero's projectile doesn't do damage. However, he has an amazing approach. That's literally the one downside to Sub-Zero is that he can't attack from a long range. So I'm gonna keep the uh, his uh, projectile in my back pocket till I really need him. See how quickly that comes out? It's definitely the fastest approach option in the game. And probably has one of my favorite, uh, fatalities. Oh yay, Reptile! That means I have to fight Liu King for real, at least in round one. Excellent. Looky here. I freeze my enemy in place, and it's a free uppercut. Oh yeah, that low spin kick move, you press back and C at the same time. So, pro tip. And for the uppercuts, you hold down and then press A while holding down, and that's an uppercut. And uppercuts do the most damage of any and all attacks in the game. Fight. Finish him. All right, uppercut. Right into the spikes. Yeah, obviously I would have to use the cheat codes for the blood and gore, but... Fight. The one hits were just uh, in the shadow... Uh, flags are just there to make my job go by a lot faster. So yeah, Sub-Zero is probably my favorite character to play as in this game. And I'm just going to... Continue uh, wiping the floor out of my opponents all the way through to the endurance rounds. There is one problem with, with uh, one major problem with Sub Zero's approach it doesn't work on the final boss. Unless he transforms beforehand, but. So basically, you have to fight and beat him the hard way. That's what it means. Honestly, had I known that I could beat Mortal Kombat this quickly, I probably would have filmed it well ahead of time for the 11th game of Christmas. So, hindsight's 2020. 20 
and put it up for New Year's Eve. Oh well, I guess this makes it my first game of my own that I get to play and beat this year, not counting Final Fantasy VII. We defeat our arch rival. So Zero and Scorpion are arch enemies, by the way, in arch rivals. So now, quick Flynn against Raiden, followed by Johnny Cage. I think it's better to call sub classify Sub Zero in. I wonder which fighter is missing among those statues. There's Scorpion, Johnny Cage, Kano, Gordo, Goro, and Sub Zero and Raiden. Excellent. And here's Sonya. New King's missing. Why is Luke King the only fighter missing? Cheats are not permissible, but you know what? You gotta do what you gotta do. And besides this, a we want the blood and go we want the blood codes, and which is Abacab, and B. Even though it makes, even though the cheats sort of makes it easier to speed things along, it also makes the fighters so much harder. Note that in order to perform a fatality, you have to be a certain distance away from the opponent, and you have to hit the right button combinations to pay on the characters. Actually, getting that right's the hard part. But yeah, this is when I realized that I could honestly bully Goro rather easily. But you can also bully me too if I'm depending on the character I'm using. But this guy is levitating, so obviously the approach option's not gonna do anything to him. And freeze and you and the ice ball doesn't do damage. Defeat Shang Sun. You are the Supreme World Combat Warrior. After receiving the title of Grand Champion, Sub-Zero disappears back into the shadows from which he came. His only goal in the tournament was... The assassination of Shang Tsung. He was paid a large sum of money by one of Tsung's wealthy enemies. With this mission accomplished, Sub-Zero will collect... Oh, shit. So, Sub-Zero is an anti-hero with stronger leanings towards the side of villainy. Though it's not to say that Shang Tsung and Goro are good people, either. Next, our second hero our character, Sonya. And by my money, the worst fighter in the game. And it's a little difficult to just specify why, but okay, I can tell you exactly why. Her approach option sends her flying across the screen. Fight. She goes straight up 
and just hovers over the enemies, and it's almost impossible to hit anything with that. Her uh, projectile isn't particularly good either. The bright side is that Sonya can perform her fatality from just about any distance, so there's that. Fight. And it's because of this, Sonya can't really do much of anything other than that backflip. Which isn't even that good anyway, so... Yeah, Sonya has a lot of tools and they're not very good. Fight. You're basically stuck using her default move kit whenever possible. And that puts you at a huge disadvantage. Characters like Liu Kang has insane combo potentials. Uh, Raiden has great maneuverability. Sub-Zero has the best setups for... For an uppercut in the game. And those scorpions attacks leave him wide open. Rather easily, I should add. He's in as not not the best approach either. I will at least say all of those characters have something worth using them for. Sonya really doesn't. She doesn't approach well. And she's left wide open when using her unique attacks. Fight. Finish him. All right, Johnny Cage is next. Fight. I will say, though, that Sonya is probably the most heroic of the uh, combatants as she's trying to rescue somebody held captive by Shane's son. I believe uh, Mortal Kombat... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Mortal Kombat got its inspiration from the film series Bloodsport, starring uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme. I mean, I can definitely see elements of Bloodsport, of uh, Big Trouble in Little China, and other similar properties, and, and I guess Enter the Dragon as well in the plot of Mortal Kombat. Then again, every fighting game under the sun, aside from Super Smash Bros. and Dissidia, takes its inspiration from Enter the Dragon. I mean, conventional fighting games. Pretty much all of them under the sun take their inspiration from Enter the Dragon. Mortal Kombat does, Street Fighter does, Fail Fury and Kings of Fire, King of Fighters, Tekken. Excellent. Finish him. <coughs> Man, I the score I just could not get at least Scorpion leaves himself wide open with his projectiles. Which could be enough to make him the true worst fighter in the game, but I would pro I would say his absolute lowest would be sixth worst because Sonya's approach is that much worse. And at least, 
scorpion com can combo well into an uppercut. I'm not sure what else I have to say. Other than that, we are already over halfway done. And I think what's speeding things all up along considerably is, eh, I no longer need to use the, ch I uh, put in cheat codes. B, I'm getting much more accustomed to the fight to the fighting game's controls and the rules of the game. Even though, and in spite of the song, it still sucks. I'm sorry. Wait. Giant Cage's approach also leaves them wide open. But at least it comes out quickly and deals a ton of damage. And I gotta get ready for the uppercut holding down the down button here. There we go. I need to get away from Goro. There we go. <coughs> Sorry, I'm kind of recovering from an illness. That's what you get when you don't get a lot of sleep and you feel tired all the time. Anyways, this should go by super quickly now. I just need a quick uh, upper kick to the face. So just a... Not sexy, but... At the Fishing Sun. You are the Supreme Royal Combat Warrior. But... Captured by Shang Tsung's selling a special forces unit was taken hostage. Their only hope was the tournament. Shang Tsung promised to release the entire team. Only if Sonya could win the contest. Her victory not only released her unit, but also put an end to the Black Dragon Shang Tsung's powerful grip on the tournament. The Black Dragon, is, Dragon unit is, uh, is Kano's group of mercenaries. Now we are moving on to Raiden. This should be a fun one. Ryan can teleport behind the opponent. And it's basically automatic. So that's awesome. He shoots lightning out of his hands. And he And he can send himself flying right into the opponent. Until he ran, until the opponent rams into a wall, dealing a ton of damage in the process. And Raiden is one of the few characters alongside Sonya who can perform their fatality from any distance. Johnny Cage, Kano, and, uh... Sub Zero have to be right next to the opponent or perform their fatalities. But Sonya and Raiden, even however, it definitely took a while for me to learn Raiden's fatality. Moral of the story: uh, Scorpion is the only character that needs to block in order to perform his fatality. I like that his electricity can cause opponents' heads to explode when Johnny just needs to punch their heads clean off. An uppercut kind of rips their heart out of their bodies. They're still beating hearts. Fight. 
This stage sends enemies straight into a spike pit. Sub Zero rips up their head and spine. Still attached to their spine. And Sonya just blows. It's fire that incinerates the opponent, and Raiden causes heads to explode with his electricity. Uh, Raiden is a god, and it's a misspelling error. It's a misspell it Raiden with a Y. It should be R A I D E N. It's Japanese. But Ray Raiden here is a god. That's his story. And Raiden winning this tournament is bad news for the rest of mankind. So I do kind of like that there are some clear villain characters among this cast. That if they win, it's so much worse for all of us than if they were to than if someone else were to win. Off the top of my head, the only other time where you get something like this is in Tekken, and it's really just the Mishima clan in that case. Or the main villains of whatever Tekken game. And I don't know much about Street Fighter, so sorry about that. Maybe next year, but I think next year's 12 Games of Christmas, I would like to focus more on games I already own. Fight. <laughs> All right. And really, Sonya is just being difficult because she's just blocking all my attacks. Fight. But really, Sonya has absolutely no answers for me. Now, the question is who's the best in a two player competitive setting? I would say the worst is probably Scorpion because his moves leave him wide open. Fight. Not only do they leave him wide open, it requires that he be at a certain distance from the opponent in order to pull off. Whereas projectiles, the distance could be anything. Also, his, uh... Method of actually, he does absolutely no closing option, and his teleportation is pretty bad. Right. Raiden is one of only two characters in the game that can actually teleport. Start of the end game. All right. Now we have to take care of Johnny Cage here. Alright! 
Last finisher, last fatality with Raiden. Now we'll do prepare for Goro. It's like delay on the uh Alright. Shane Sun. Wait. All right. And I've seen a fishing sun. You're the supreme moral combat warrior. Ryan's victory comes as no surprise to him. He was never impressed by Shane Sun's inferior sorcery, Gore's brute force. Or the challenge of the other contestants. He quickly becomes bored with his moral competition, soon invites other gods to participate in the contest. The wars result in our world's final destruction. Have a nice day! Huh. Yeah! Kano, wi Kano wins, it's bad for all of us. Raya wins, it's bad for all of us. Sonya wins! Saya or Johnny Cage or Liu Kim wins. It's actually good for us. And Scorpion and Sub Zero are all fine for their own personal motives. And not really for the greater good. Liu Kang wins. And Liu Kang is a martial artist, so he has a bunch of wild combinations. And probably the most elaborate... Uh, fatality of the bunch. Leading to a rather underwhelming end result. Uh, you know what, at least I'm winning my fights super quickly. <coughs> and I haven't encountered reptiles since the Sub-Zero playthrough, so... That's going through- so that allows me to speed through these matches a lot faster. That's also why I chose not to turn on the first f uh, flag number four. Because that will cause Ryan, uh, Reptile to appear in every stage. And that ain't fun at all. Fight. It's kind of, oh wait never mind uh he got skewered by one of the through the head by one of the spikes that's pretty gruesome but then again do characters in the Mortal Kombat universe ever actually stay dead I'm curious no seriously I'm kind of curious I'm not super familiar with Mortal Kombat lore. Do they stay dead forever? I don't think so, because these characters keep coming back in every game. I think these some characters in particular are, in a lot of ways, similar to the original 12 in Super Smash Bros. You just can't ever do make do without either one of them. And a mirror match, as per usual. Fight. Finish him. That 
mortality. <clears throat> By the way, the op what I do in the options menu doesn't ma make a heck of a difference because these characters are going to just die in one hit. I mean, the ones that don't die in one hit are harder than the hardest difficulty setting in the game. I think, too, that is that Luke Kane's attacks just come out super quickly. So it's very, very difficult to get a read on him. Because he is super fast. Which makes sense because he's a martial artist. In a similar vein to, say, Bruce Lee. Again, must I remind... Must I remind you, the inspiration, the main, excuse me, the main inspiration for this game, like most other fighting games, is Enter the Dragon. But also Blood, but also Blood Sport. In Mortal Kombat's case. And I guess Big Troll trying to cause Shang Tsung looks a lot like the villain of that movie. And Goro kind of looks like something that you could see in something like, like Big Shot, uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Air the dragon. In other stories similar to it, the it's a fine tournament where all the contestants have to fight each other to the death. I mean, even blood sport, though it's not technically a guaranteed kill. It's fairly common for contestants to die in that film. I I've only seen the, like. I think the third Bloodsport film. That's the one where uh, Jean Claude Van Damme fights the the uh, fire known as Beast. And that's all you really need to know about that movie. He is, yeah, he's called Beast for a reason. Yeah, I need to check out the Bloodsport films. Yeah, Supreme Mortal Kombat Warrior. After defeating the mighty Goro and playing into Shang Tsung's rule over the tournament, King is able to return the contest to its rightful host, the Shaolin Temples. King's heroics will always be remembered. He will continue the tradition of the Shaolin Temples and restore the true pride and respect of this once great tournament. So, yeah. Uh, Liu Kane is another one of the more heroic characters alongside Johnny Cage and Sonya. And now he saved one of the best, or one of the worst characters, depending on who you ask for last. That is Scorpion. And like Sub-Zero, it's best to classify him as an anti-hero. But more on the side of hero than villain. As Scorpion looks to avenge his, his uh, death at the hands of Sub Zero. A scene with this finisher, and you reveal that his face is nothing but a skull. A fire breathing skull. So, yeah, Scorpion's dead. And that was his projectile, which actually pulls enemies in. The downside is you have to be a certain distance from the uh, from the opponent to pull it off.
it's very easy to dodge. And if the opponent gets out of the way in time, or either by blocking or dodging, they get a free hit on you because Scorpion needs to pull the the projectile back towards him. <laughs> Double flawless. And at that, yes, Scorpion and Sub-Zero are essentially clone fighters. However, they have different special moves. Honestly, if not for the fact that Mortal Kombat is banned in Japan, I could seriously see Scorpion Sub-Zero making it to Super Smash Brothers as Fighter and Echo Fighter in whatever order. They are the most popular characters in the series, after all. Fight. Fight. Finish him. All right. And no such thing song appears in the background on some of these stages, including this one. As well as the first one, too. So that's kind of interesting. Get over here! My fa- My favorite, uh, Into the Dragon style movie? Well, I don't know. I think they're kind of cheap. I think those movies are kind of che cheesy. So my favorite is probably uh... so like Enter the Dragon, Bloodsport. I haven't seen any of the Bloodsport films in years, like since I was a kid. Get over here. Uh. I've only saw Enter the Dragon once on TV. I thought it was fine. I think my first exposure to the Sora story would be is obviously Tekken 2. That was my first fighting game anyways. All right. Fight. Get over here. Get over here. Get over here. <laughs> just just spamming that move over and over again. And yes, Scorpions always says get over here every time he uses the uh uses his projectile Fight. and it lands obviously Get over here. Get over by the way if you time it you get a free hit with the with that spear here. thing every single time which is why I'm able to chain in some very quick wins with Scorpion Fight. So, if you want to know why I put Scorpion as number two behind Sub Zero, that's why. Unfortunately, his approach—he has no approach option. All he has is a teleport. Scorpion and Raya are the only characters in the game with a teleport, and Scorpion's teleport, even though it has a combative use to it, it kind of sucks. Alright. Fight. And by the way, there are no unlockable fighters in this game, so once I beat the game with Scorpion, that is it. But I will let the credits roll. Get over here. It's kind of 
weird that the that Scorpion's final opponent prior to Goro isn't Sub-Zero. It really feels like it should be Sub-Zero here, or vice versa, but it's not. Alright, this guy's so big, it's easy to bully him with the spikes, but keep in mind, Goro is more than capable of blocking, just like everybody else. However, the blocking does nothing if he goes down one hit, so there you go. And Shang Tsung turns into Sub Zero. And by the way, Shang Tsung uses the moves of the fire he turns into. Defeat Shang Tsung. You are the Supreme Moral War Combat Warrior. Marked for death years ago by the Lin Qiu, Scorpion was murdered by Sub Zero. He left behind a wife and child in his former life, but was allowed to return to avenge his death. Even with Scorpion's triumph in the tournament and New Tile's Grand Champion, the price he paid was high. He can never again know his family and must exist forever with a secret curse. Yeah, anti here, alright. Anyways, that's Moral Combat for the Sega Genesis, and here are the live actor models for each of these fighters. That's kinda neat that this is one of the earliest games to feature live action character models for uh, the emotion capture in a Sega Genesis game. Girl character designed. And stop motion miniature design. So Goro has no actor. Ho Sung Pak as Shang Tsung. And that is Moral Combat for the Sega Genesis. Yet another perfect playthrough in the books. And it's the first of 30 games this year that I plan on beating. And of course, that's the 11th game of Christmas. Even though it came a little late. But hey, better late than ever, right? right? I like this game fine. I do think it's kind of interesting how later tiles actually include characters like Robocop and Terminator and Predator and, and stuff like that. I think even a Mar Too bad there are no Marvel characters, but that's 11 games down and one more to go. So what game do we have in store for our 12th and final game of Christmas? Uh, you'll find out soon enough. Once I'm done filming Final Fantasy VII, I will head straight towards the 12th and final game of Christmas. Leave a like, comment, subscribe to my channel. I greatly appreciate it. With all that out of the way, this is Mike Gordon, sign out.